I've got an unboxing video for you today, and these comics came from a galaxy far, far away. Let's open this up and see what's inside. All right, so not only am I trying to find new sellers to buy from, but I'm also uh, trying to shift, uh, I guess, my target and focus on what books I'm looking for. And I am uh, I'm definitely one of those people where it's more seeing is believing. Uh, you'll hear speculators talk a lot about like uh, books or characters that will pop and they'll say, we knew this character was coming for three years. Uh, why didn't, why is everybody reacting right now? Uh, well, if you ever wondered like who those people are, I, I'm one of those people. I'm I'm kind of a seeing is believing, or I need to really get confirmed information on a casting or somebody in a trailer. Um, I will buy a lot of books ahead of time, and I do believe where there is smoke, there is fire when it comes to comic book speculation. But for the most part, I do feel like it's okay to let the books rise and, and generate a little bit of heat and let them simmer for a while. And uh, you can still find them. They're, they're still out there. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more for those books, yes. But it's more of a lower risk as time goes on because you're able to see these confirmations. Now, uh, I'm all in on Star Wars. Uh, I've been enjoying the Book of Boba Fett. And it's really interesting because I kind of see my own habits in terms of what I'm looking for in, in from out of... Uh, buying comic books and looking at my collection of what I want to grade. And as the MCU starts to maybe take a little bit of a break uh, in terms of Disney Plus and uh, theatrical releases, so I'm all in on Star Wars now. And because I'm into it and interested, I'm now looking for Star Wars comic books to either match speculation rumors or to backfill uh, missing uh, pieces of my collection. So I have an order today that I ordered from Stargirls Books. <laughs> uh, I didn't do that on purpose. It just happened to, to be the case. Uh, that particular seller on Atomic Avenue had some Star Wars comics that I was uh, looking for uh, at a good price. So I'm going to open up this order and we'll take a look at the books. Okay, so here's the order. I've uh, got the label covered up to protect the innocent, but uh, it came in a nice big uh, Gemini mailer here. So let me go ahead and cut the tape. Um, and this arrived safely and securely with just those few pieces of tape around it. I need a safari knife. I don't know if this is working out. I think we're in. Backing board. All right, look at that nice brick of uh, comic books. Now, these books did arrive media mail. So, you know, the seller's kind of assuming that risk. Um, I want my book, so I guess I'm assuming the same risk. But uh, definitely want to consider not doing that. But uh, they arrived nonetheless. So here's the stack of books in a kind of an oversized plastic bag. Uh, had some painter's tape, which is great. I love that. It's easy to peel off. And it looks like, you know, it's kind of stuck to some of the bags on the inside because they're not taped. So let's get these out of here. And painter's tape is still stuck to some of the bags on the inside, so I'm working on that. We're almost out. There we go. Okay. So like I said, lots of Star Wars comics. Uh, hopefully you're into it. I know I am. And let's see which books I ordered. And then once we go through the books, um, then we'll take a look at the order analysis and see if it was worth my time and money. 
Uh, here's Kanan, the last Padawan, number four. Um, so, my goodness, uh, check out that gash right here. Let me try and move these out so you can see it in focus. Look at this tear. How about that, huh? Not bad for the first book. Uh, let me take this out and show you what this looks like. So this will be an immediate uh, photo and um, message to the seller. So just a piece of that front cover, just something got a hold of that and just ripped it right there, ripped right through it. So there you can see the hole right through the book. Um, so yeah, this is basically a reader copy at this point. So that's cool. I can read the book, check it out. Um, trying to get back issues of Canaan, but uh, obviously this this didn't quite work out. So uh, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Uh, I hope they're not all ripped like that. Uh, it doesn't look to be the case. Uh, this is Canaan number seven. I already had this issue, uh, but uh, like I said, I'm grabbing uh, back issues where I can. Uh, I just don't know how the Rebels characters are going to play out yet in the Star Wars uh, universe going forward. So I'm just grabbing uh, any books that I can. Uh, and this is a great series. Uh, Kanan 1, I'm big on. I don't have the first cover appearance of the Rebels. Uh, but again, if I don't have that particular key book, um, even if the storyline isn't quite related to that key, I try and surround the key uh, and overwhelm it with all the books around it. This one looks to be much better, so <laughs> I'm relieved. It could just be a one-off. Um, it's definitely in that near mint range at first glance, so that's good. The other series that uh, has been uh, popular uh, for a number of reasons is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Uh, so I've shown you a couple of unboxings of issue number one, and I wanted to go ahead and get some of the rest of the series. Uh, really great uh, additional uh, stories uh, uh, that involve the uh, original trilogy characters. So here's Luke on the cover of this one. Um, I can tell that it does have a little bit of spine damage here, uh, some color breaking issues there. So it may not be a 9-8 candidate, uh, but could be in that near mint range, or at least in the 8-5 to 9-2 to range. Um, so that's Shadows of the Empire number three. Here's Shadows of the Empire number four. Uh, this has Leia on the cover, Hugh Fleming cover from 1996. Um, this one looks to be much better uh, from first glance. Just bag and board looks to be even a 9-8 candidate, so that's good news. Trying to get all of the issues now, now that I had number one uh, secured. Here's another one that's, uh, that's heating up very quickly and, and has already... Uh, risen in value, and this is Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, number one. Uh, it's a five-issue series, all told, um, and I've been buying this from a number of places, and this looks to be a great copy uh, from this seller. Uh, just a tiny bit of corner damage there, but uh, that looks really good. I don't see any, any holes or tears in the book, so that's a relief. I wanted to make sure I got uh, at least one solid 9-8 Candidate of Tales of the Jedi, and this might be it. So again, just surrounding the key, uh, Tales of the Jedi, um, issue number four, uh, Jabba the Hutt on the cover. This one looks to be not as good as one, and that's fine. One was the main book that I, I bought, and I wanted to grab the others, but there's, there's a little bit of spine damage there, but it looks to be pretty good shape, so not bad. Tales of the Jedi, number four. And keeping along the the same theme, here's Tales of the Jedi 5, and there is some cover something in there. I don't know what that is, but there's some cover tearing right there. Kind of, yeah, there you go, right there in the light. So, yeah, uh, you know, they're not, the graders on Atomic Avenue are not consistent. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not grading accurately, it just means it's inconsistent. So um, the near mint range on there really, really fluctuates. Uh, I would say some, probably somewhere around a 9 to a 9.8 is really more the near mint range. Uh, a lot of times it'll slip into an 8.5. Uh, but again, the gamble is you hit on some of those 
and you get him in a 9-8. Um, I wanted to grab uh, a few of these modern Star Wars books that uh, I, I had collected, but maybe we're just buying one issue at a time. And again, I, there's always opportunities to go back if you miss something. Um, very rarely, unless you're talking about a high ratio incentive that somebody has in their possession and they're pushing it and they're hyping it, does a book really take off where it's just like, wow, that thing is just out of this universe and I, I'll never have it and it's way too expensive. These sorts of books that come out at cover and maybe they double up to 10 bucks, um, you can always go back and find them somewhere. Um, so these are examples of those uh, with my last uh, few books here. This is Star Wars High Republic Adventures, issue two. Um, I was just buying single copies of the High Republic Adventures, so um, going back, I love this artist. Uh, he's great. I, I, his line work, I don't know, there's something about it. It's, it's slightly cartoonish, but also uh, definitely lots of hints of realism in here. But just the, the level of detail in the lines, like through her hair and everything. Um, he does the covers and the interiors. Amazing. It's, it's a real treat to have him on that book. Uh, let me just see here. I think uh, let's, I had one other Tales of the Jedi. I'll just do that last. Uh, and then I got three copies of, looks like the seller. Uh, no, they're just stuck together. So I got three copies of High Republic Adventures number six. Um, and this had a first appearance in it, uh, first cover. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and grab this as well and hopes to have this in a 9.8. This was something that I pre-ordered one copy of and then it shot up to like 10, 12 bucks. You know, again, nothing out of the ordinary, but what was nice is I got these uh, at a great price um, from Stargirl's Books on Atomic Avenue. So this is three copies of High Republic Adventures. Again, that um, Talabao uh, cover with the interior art. Amazing. And then the last book kind of slipped off the pile here. Tales of the Jedi, number two. So again, trying to get all five issues, multiple copies of one, uh, but uh, just kind of following the, the news and the speculation. And when you do that, then you can find places like Atomic Avenue, Mile High Comics, um, other places, my comic shop, like there's there's lots of places on the internet outside of eBay. It just requires a little bit of digital digging and a little bit of know-how. And these are the types of things that, you know, I'm trying to share with you on my channel um, and show you kind of how I'm finding these books and how I'm locating them. And then uh, when I do, does it make sense to buy them? So if you see Tales of the Jedi for 20 bucks somewhere, in, in a near mint. Does that mean it's a good deal? It, it might, it might not. Uh, there's a lot of times that I see books that I think are desirable or they're, they're getting hyped and I find them and they're expensive and I don't know if that's the right time to buy or not. Uh, what I used to do is I used to FOMO really hard and I would overpay for books and a lot of times I was glad that I did, and then other times I was stuck. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, again, kind of sprinkle in in my, my algorithm some FOMO, some additional expense for waiting, uh, but not waiting, waiting too long, um, and then, again, finding reputable sellers that I can count on to send me high-quality books. So let's see if this new seller that I purchased these books from are now... Uh, going to make the cut in terms of sellers that I will look to purchase from in the future by analyzing the details of the order. Okay, here we go. This is the order that I placed full transparency. I placed it from Atomic Avenue from the seller Star Girls Books, and it was placed on December 27th, 2021. I paid $63.25 for this collection of Star Wars books. Um, I have reached out to the seller already to talk about Kanan number four with that, that tear and hole in the bottom. Uh, and when that happens, the sellers are great. They typically either take your word for it or they may ask for a few photos. You send them the photos um, and they should be able to issue a full refund. Uh, you know, 
if it was Tales of the Jedi 1, I would have been pretty upset. It's Kanan 4. It's not a key book. It's $2.50. It's okay. Um, the reason I bought the couple of Kanan books is you'll see here in column U, this is the cover price fair market value for these books. So I've plugged those in and those two books were under FMV. So a lot of times my acquisition spreadsheet when I'm ranking the books, uh, sometimes it's not just about potential graded value. Sometimes it's just that the book raw has a, a good value or it's, it's listed at a fair price under FMV. And so that kind of elevates things. Uh, I'll be honest, I was kind of targeting Star Wars books because I was getting into Book of Boba Fett and looking at other Star Wars keys that were being kind of lit up in the speculation market and just happened to search for Kanan. I'm always kind of on the lookout for any books of the Kanan, the last Padawan series, and saw that these were relatively affordable. And that's that's basically why I bought those. So an FMV of $5 and $4 for those two books. Obviously, it's not worth anything because it has that, that tear. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to work something out with the seller and get a full refund of my $2.50 investment. So that will come back to me. Uh, but the FMV is interesting. There's several that are over $10, which is great. Uh, but you'll notice here, uh, when I look at my total cost, and this is just kind of recapping what I paid for the book, plus applying any shipping or tax uh, monies uh, across all of the books. In this case, it was free shipping, uh, no tax. I must have hit the threshold of 50 or $60 to get free shipping. And I try and do that with every order. I try and unlock free shipping for sellers that offer it instead of uh, going slightly under and then paying for shipping. And then it's, you know, you may as well get a couple free books uh, the way that I look at it. Uh, so the raw profit is basically the difference between what I paid and the cover price fair market value. And you'll see the Shadows of the Empire books I overpaid according to FMV. I paid $10 for those books each and the FMV is a little over 5 so lost money in that respect, but everything else was uh, under FMV for a total potential uh, profit. Again, I use air quotes on that of $50.55 because the profit is obviously only realized if you sell. And in this case, the Canaan is a mess. Uh, this is if I were to take all of the books and just turn them right around and sell them somewhere at FMV, in theory, if you're selling books at fair market value, then that's the additional uh, money you stand to earn. But, you know, it's just the potential there. Uh, it gives me a rough idea. Am I buying books at fair market value below or above? So it's really just kind of a guide. So in this case, I look at this order and went, yeah, I'm $50 over FMV. Maybe if I take 10% off and sell them, I'm still, uh, you know, looking at a, a decent profit of just the raw books. Now, I'm always looking at the books to see potential for grading as well, trying to get them in high grades. So right now the CGC profit is a huge negative, and that's again because I don't have grades in here. So let me plug in the grades. I understand that Canaan 4 is not a 9-4, and that's fine. I just wanted to show you kind of uh, an example of what I'm looking for in terms of FMV, books listed as near mint, and taking that 9.4 average, the industry standard for near mint. So let's just Go right down the line, plug them all in, and see what we got. Uh, so it looks like Tales of the Jedi is going to carry this order. So even at a 9.4, it's popping at $88 in a 9.4 uh, in a CGC slab. Um, looks like Shadows of the Empire 4 has some nice value at $50. And Tales of the Jedi 2 at $42. So those are all positive. The rest are either uh, negative or zero. Most of them are zero here. And it just means that there's just no graded value or potential as of the current uh, market conditions for these books in a 9.4. And there's a number of reasons why Kanan and High Republic Adventures are modern. So unless it's a super high key, nobody really wants 9.4s. So this was kind of a low risk, mediocre reward type of strategy or uh, with this order, I would say there's nothing really outstanding here. Uh, Tales of the Jedi, number one, again, that's the big key carrying the, the order. Um, so it's a big negative here if I were to take these books and just blindly send them off for grading on average they would come back 9.4 and I would have lost a lot of money so this is another example of why you don't want to do that you really want to grade each book um, but some of them maybe they don't have the CGC potential but they've got that fair market value here and certainly High Republic Adventures number six is a good example I was getting those books for four dollars 
it has a fair market value of $12.52. So a nice $8.52 raw FMV profit on those, but in a nine point and a 9.4, there's no value. Now, kind of at the high end, this is always fun. I understand all of these books are not going to be a 9.8, but you can kind of see why I target these or why my spreadsheet says, hey, take a chance. $462.05 on the high end is the value uh, potential gain here uh, for this order. Again, being carried by Tales of the Jedi 1. That was the real reason I made the order. And then I started to look at this seller. I started to look at... Um, you know, a new seller that I'm trying to, uh, you know, get some data on, get some experience with ordering. And I felt like this was a relatively small order. I could kind of sneak in that one key. Uh, it looks to be a high grade candidate. Is it a 9.8? You know, we'll see. Uh, but that one has all the potential here uh, to be $157 and, and carry this order. Now you'll see also High Republic Adventures in a 9.8 has some nice value at $70. So hopefully, few of those moderns uh, uh, grayed out as 9.8 as well. And that's basically it. That's uh, I'm not going to grade any of the books here today. Uh, I will grade them and I'll start to catalog them and plug them in and see overall what the, um, the order ends up at. But this is a brand new seller, so I'm going to get them into my seller ledger and start to keep stats. And what I end up doing is I start eliminating some of the sellers, right? So whether it's a bad experience with a seller or maybe I've ordered now from a significant number of sellers from eBay, Atomic Avenue, and so forth. Uh, and, you know, I have to kind of start picking the cream of the crop and only ordering from those individuals or companies to get the highest quality books. That's the whole point. So I've been ordering from Atomic Avenue for a while, but I would say that there's so many sellers that my data is still a little bit raw. My sample sizes are small. I would have to probably place a couple more orders with this particular seller to just kind of see, you know, um, is it somebody that I can rely on? What is the average grade of the books and the quality and so forth? I want to see if the seller resolves the, the matter with Canaan 4. And if not, then they kind of get on my blacklist, if, <laughs> uh, if you will. And uh, I go through my uh, books that I'm targeting. And if I don't want to purchase from that seller, I start uh, eliminating that seller's items from my list and replacing it with uh, sellers that I trust. And that's just kind of how it works. And a lot of times on Atomic Avenue, I don't know if they're undercutting each other or whatever, but there could be a seller that I don't quite trust their grading and a book is listed for four bucks. And right underneath is a seller that I've purchased from before, had a good experience with, and it's $4.25. So it's a good reason to just kind of move on from a seller. You don't have to just constantly buy and buy and buy and be disappointed. It's okay to have a few transactions, have it not work out, move on, chalk it up to a good experience, and it helps you find those reputable places to buy from. And it could be an LCS. It could be somebody you see at a convention. Um, you know, it's just kind of, uh, and you don't need spreadsheets to tell you that. You kind of know. But what the data tells you is that you may be having a good experience. You may think you're getting a good deal on um, some sort of social media platform. Uh, somebody might be throwing you free books. They might be making you feel good. But at the end of the day, it's gotta come down to the, the comics themselves, the condition, the value, and so forth. And a lot of times, um, you know, the, the value and the data is gonna win out. Um, and if you can get a great relationship with somebody that you like to work with and you trust, and they're giving you good books, then that's the home run that we're all uh, looking to hit. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.